morning, everyone. Um, I know it's spring break for most of you this week, so I hope that you guys have some fun stuff planned and get some relaxing done. This is our third week on our patience lessons, um, and our Bible verse for the month has been Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Today's lesson comes from Genesis 25, 24 through 34. It's all about Esau's impatience. And um, the bottom line for this week is if you don't wait, it could cost you. Um, so we'll listen to what the so-and-so guys have to say. I hope you guys all have a great week off from school. And I'll see you back here next week. Ooh, a marshmallow. Sure. Eat the mallow, miss out on something better. What do you mean? If you wait and don't eat that mallow until I return, then you will receive something even better than a mere measly mallow. Better than a marshmallow? <laughs> Not one bite. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. I don't think he can wait and resist eating that marshmallow, but if he can, I'm going to give him an entire bag of marshmallows. <laughs> All right, here we go. Count to ten. One, two, three. All right, let's go. <laughs> Where's the desk? Did you eat the desk? Um, uh, uh. You ate the desk! I didn't eat the marshmallow! Oh. Alright. Oh. Hey everybody, I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. You've been waiting a whole week to see this show. Thank you for your patience. I know you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Did somebody say manners? Uh, no. I am Melinda Manners, and I can always tell when my help is needed. I can sense when someone is being manly. <laughs> and when someone is not. Oh. oh, yeah, all right. Sorry. <laughs> Chair. We're not so, <laughs> my dear boys, what seems to be the problem today? Uh, no, no problem. We're just trying to get the show rolling. So. Patience, my dear boys, patience. It's one of the most important manners. I wrote an entire symphony on patience once. Oh, is that <clears> right? <throat> let's... let's... <clears throat> Nice. Yeah, I feel like mm. I'm learning so much from that. Oh, that's just the tip of the ice cube. Oh, no, that's not the uh, word. That uh, uh. If you want to be manly, don't speak out, just sit quietly. Don't correct or presume, just sit tight and listen to me. Now, I meant what I said about sitting tight. Shoulders back, boys. It is unmanly to slouch. <clears throat> Better? So, uh, Melinda, now that you're here, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, so many things. There's nothing unmannerly about having fun, after all. I keep my favorite things with me at all times. Let's see. 
Oh, yes, yes. Hold this, please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Oh. A ball for baskets. A screen flat for movies. And this electronic sewing box. Wow, you certainly do know how to have fun. How did you pull all of this out of that bag? I may be delicate in my manners, but I am a strong woman. Manners and strength are like peas and carrots. They go together like deserts and ferrets. How do deserts and ferrets go together? Now, my most favorite fun to have is the kind that you can really learn from. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh! Let's play a little game I like to call Bake and Wait. Our preparations are complete. Now we simply need to insert the pan into the oven. And in 27 short minutes, we can enjoy some delicious light bulb heated balls of cookie dough. 27 minutes? Hey, this may take a while. You may want to speed through. Let's eat! Actually, now the cookies have to sit in the cooling chamber for five minutes. Oh, no, thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Wow! <laughs> it would be unmannerly for me to say I told you so. So I'll just sing it. Being patient is always right, but you didn't listen, for you're not so bright. It's Baba Thoris and McKellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. What's up today, Kellen? Well, today we're looking at something that happened in the very first book of the Bible. That's right. Genesis, specifically Genesis chapter 25. This is the story of two twin brothers, Jacob and Esau. It wasn't my fault. Jacob tricked me. Um, what's going on? You can't prove anything, Esau. Yes, I can. Tricky McTricker face. That's not my name. It should be. Okay, okay, slow down. I think we might need some kind of judge to handle this. You have just stepped into the courtroom of Judge Trudy. The cases are biblical. The people are historical. The courtroom is not real at all. This is Judge Trudy. Just to be clear, this courtroom did not appear in the Bible. Oh, I'll take it from here, Kellen. So, Esau says here in your case file that you were born first. So you got your family's rights and inheritance. Is that correct? That's correct. I was born first. This is my birthright. Mine. Hmm. Well, a birthright is a really big deal. It means you'll get more of your father's wealth and property. And that you'll become leader of the family. Yeah, that's right. But Jacob, you stole the birthright from your older brother, correct? No, I did not steal it. He sold it to me. Fair and square. The, the trickster! At it again! You were the one who made the trade. Order! I need to know the real story. Bailiff, roll the security footage. Jacob, quick, I'm insanely hungry. Feed me some of that stew. Sure, but first you have to sell me your birthright. Look, I'm dying of hunger. What good are those rights to me now? Promise me, promise me you'll sell me your rights. Fine, I can't wait any longer. I promise to give you my birthright. Wait, Esau! Did you not even value your birthright? I was hungry. 
Oh, but you didn't have one bit of patience. You could have waited and eaten something else later. Let me ask you something. Was the stew worth it? It was okay. Mm -hmm. Taste lasts but for a moment. But your birthright would have affected generations. It seems to me, Esau, that your complaint against your brother is your own fault. I cannot rule in your favor. You made your choice. Court is adjourned. This has been Judge Trudy. Even though there's no way that was the real Jacob and Esau, Judge Trudy summed it up well. Esau did not value his rights as the firstborn son. Being impatient made him sell something that was worth more than we can imagine for the price of one little bowl of stew. Bummer. Seriously. You know, being impatient can actually cost you. Totally. When we're not patient, we rush in without thinking about the consequences. Oh, I know. I bent my tongue. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I think we can avoid a lot of problems if we just pause and think before we act. There's a lot we can miss out on when we're not willing to wait. It's good to hear. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I think I've learned that today. Put that away, please. Sorry. Reveal the question. What could you miss out on by not waiting? Yeah, like when you eat snacks before dinner and then you're not hungry and it turns out to be your favorite meal. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, or you can miss out on spending time with your friends who are running late because you didn't want to wait for them. Or maybe something even more drastic like an ESOS case. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together and we'll see you next time. I'm John. And I'm Brandon and this was The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. Keep going. Nice. We're really coming into it now. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for the big finish. Oh, I left the blowtorch on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.